I'm gonna see what Case is up to. We um, got a lot of stuff from Home Depot today after we went to church, and I think he's working on um, some electrical. So we'll figure out what he's doing. I've been looking up homeschool curriculum and it's kind of stressful, so I need a break. But let's see what Case is up to. No electrical, you have insulation. No electrical. It's too hot. Ah. It's in the sun, so. Well, I need to do it off the back of the ambulance. And, and it's, it's so little the uh, so. in the sun. And it's really hot. So the electrical you were gonna do was like brake lights and turn yeah. signals. Yep. And this could cause a problem because we're welding soon, but I'm trying to put the insulation away from the areas we're welding, so some of it may come out later. Yeah. Is it easy to take out? Most of it. Will be nicer yeah. to work in here. Uh -huh. Looks good. I like the getting stuff put in here instead of taking stuff out situation. Isn't that fun? You miss cut and you just knock it off. Hammer is really hard. I'm going to show you how I cut these. So, in this case, I'm filling a void behind my cabinet and I can't slide my piece in, so I'm going to cut a short one. Um, the height of the cabinet. So what I do is first of all, if I need to decide the length, instead of measuring, I just stick it in the corner like this, kind of put it there nice and firm, and then I just hit this. Maybe once or twice. And then when I flip this over, there's a nice crease, which you might be, oh yeah, see so right there, right in the middle of the two. So now I will cut this. There we are. And I go a little tiny bit wide, just because if it's short, you can just bend it and break it. So now this should fit right there. There we go. But it's on an angle because that was a leftover piece. So now I'm just gonna razor this all the way across. There we are. One score. A really nice sharp blade does the trick. So now I can just hit it with a hammer a couple times and get a nice clean break. So now, there we are. Oh, I cut myself. Oops. I don't know how I did that. I think, oh, you know what? I cut myself on this. I, feel, I remember that. Don't get yourself on the back of a rivet. Just perfect. So sorry, tell me what you're doing. All right, well, these were obviously the doors that are gone and um, I'm framing it in and then we have this piece over here that's form fit. It pops in like a puzzle piece perfectly and it's going to be flush mounted to the back and it has a one inch flange on it that guy right there i'm going to weld those out uh stitch weld them out and we may rivet it and then it's going to get sealing all the way around so it's essentially going to be a perfect wall it should look pretty sweet and it'll be strong though because we uh we don't know what we're going to mount to the back of this thing so i wanted it to be beefy 
just like the rest. The rest of it's like every 12 inches to, yeah, they're about every 12 to 16 inch studs. So I wanted to match that up. These nice. are 13 and a half. Stronger. Yeah. Stronger than I mean. and strong. All right, cutting time. Sawyer's working on the back door, and I'm putting in a roof vent. So what I've done, I've marked the corners from the inside, and now we're gonna cut it from the outside. And we're gonna go right through this, and then we're gonna put in new two by two aluminum right here to fill that gap. All right, we're on the roof now. And you can see the cuts that I made through. So I'm just going to measure this to 14 and a quarter, which is the standard roof size, and cut it out. Can you pick it up and hold it? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna put the two outside ones, I'm gonna put welds on the inside of that, top and bottom. And then we'll do the outside. You're gonna have to like hold it square. Yep. So yeah, just put the pressure down on the bottom on the outside ones. Yep. All right. This is a really hard piece to make just because most people don't have a die that big. 